Hello, this is Dr. Maria Krenak, and I just wanted to take a few minutes um, to teach a little bit about the recent prophetic word that was released last week. Um, as, as far as your eyes can see, um, if, if you have not had an opportunity to, to listen to that prophetic word, I encourage you to listen to that first. Um, and you can find that on our website in the blog section at www.mariacrenock.com. Um, but the rhema word that really came out of that word was um, out of Genesis 13, that as far as your eyes can see, you can have. And that's very exciting. <laughs> but sometimes we need to teach on prophetic words, not just, you know, release them because it, how do we access that word, right? And so it's it's not just, oh, that word was released and it's going to happen in my life. You know, can, prophecy is conditional. Um, for example, um, uh, if, if you humble yourself before me, I'll heal your land. Well, there's conditional. You got to humble yourself in order for God to heal your land. So <clears throat> we need to sometimes uh, teach on prophetic words. Not every single one, but, you know, I, I felt the need to, to, to have some teaching on this particular word um, to, for people to be able to grab a hold of it, for people to begin to see it really manifest uh, in their lives. And so in that word, we found... Um, there were some different points, um, you know, one was that God wants to expand our territories. And territories, of course, uh, being the land that God's already given us, you know, whether it be our families, right, our, our employment. Um, uh, there's business people with, uh, that are called uh, to uh, uh, have a great financial call on their life. And, and it's kingdom related and it's uh, uh, to build the kingdom of God. and. Um, there's people with the, your ministries and uh, that God's giving you. The, those are all territories that God's giving you. And, and so God wants to expand or enlarge those territories. Uh, that was one of those things that, that came out. And so um, number two was God wants to do more. <laughs> Thank God. God's a big God. Amen. And he wants to do more than we can think or imagine and that that one's hard to even wrap our minds around because it's bigger than what we can even think or imagine God pointed that out and and then God also said in that word that he wants to fill those things that have been desolate and um, then number four God said that he wants us to have vision to accomplish his purposes and that as far as our eyes can see that we can have and so those were some of the main points that that prophetic word uh, came out with and so we find that uh, as far as your eyes can see we find that in Genesis and that's chapter 13 uh, verse 15 and I love the way the NLT translation puts it the NLT translation says I am giving all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants as a permanent possession so these things that God is doing in our lives and in this time, they're, they're, it's not a temporary, we're not looking for just a breakthrough. <clears throat> a lot of times a breakthrough is, well, it's temporary or it's just kind of a little bit of relief. That's not what, what this word's about. This word is about taking us to a whole nother level that's permanent and that we never go back. Glory to God. Once we reach that level, we never go back. And everybody's at different levels, but... <clears throat> God is looking to give us permanent possessions in our life, uh, permanent possession of healing. He's not looking to get a healing over to your body and then take it away, right? He doesn't do that. Um, but he's looking, uh, he's not looking to relieve you of pain in your physical body for just a couple of weeks or a couple of months. No, he's looking to uh, remove the pain from what he did on the cross, glory to God. And then uh, just other uh, other areas that that people need done in their lives it's it's a permanent possession that god's giving you it, it's not a temporary relief and so all glory to god through that but <clears throat> when we look at this word in genesis we see in the ch in in chapter 13 you can read the account yourself but in verses 7 8 and 9 that, that there was strife between the herdsmen between abrams and and lot's livestock it says and strife means contention um, or adversary or enemy and so there was a lot of contention between the two and so there's there's uh, been a lot of strife in people's lives things that have been distracting very very distracting there's things that have been very distracting again in people's lives to keep their keep their eyes off the things of God 
And so uh, Abraham says to Lot, man, he's like, man, let there be no strife between you and me um, and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen. And, and Abraham says, you know, is not the whole land before you. Please separate, separate from me, separate from me. See, there needs to be a separation from the strife. And in order to separate <clears throat> from, I don't know what kind of strife might be in your life, but in order to separate from the strife, you need to turn your eyes away from the strife. You need to turn your eyes away from strife and onto God, away from the strife and onto the word of God, away from strife and what does the word of God say about your situation? away from strife and what does the word God say about your circumstance right and so um, there's a turning away because because Abram's gonna go one way on the land and Lot's gonna go another way now Lot's gonna choose the land that is plush and harvest he sees the flowing rivers he sees the green trees right he's like man I'm gonna take that land Lot looked with his natural eyes and it didn't matter which way Abraham went because he knew his God. He knew it didn't matter which land that he took because he, no matter how desolate the land might look, that the land that Abraham's going to take, <clears throat> God's going to fill it. <clears throat> so no matter which way you go, as long as you take your eyes, turn them away from the strife, put your eyes on the promises of God, and God will fill it. And so all this is about... As far as you can see, you can have. Seeing is a form of vision. So we're going to focus in on perception and seeing things by God's way, seeing things by the Spirit way, seeing things by the Holy Ghost, seeing things by the Word of God, not by the natural sight. So we, we don't walk by, right, natural sight, right? We, 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 we walk by faith. So our faith has eyes. Glory to God. And so in Proverbs 4.23, it says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. So above all else means this is a pretty serious scripture, that we need to pay attention to this scripture. In other words, above all else, pay attention. You need to guard your heart, for it determines your future. So your future right now is 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 going to be determined by what you allow into your heart and how your heart sees in ephesians 1 18 paul says i pray that the eyes of your heart your heart my friend has eyes and your heart determines your future so paul says i pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened or illuminated in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance so in order for the eyes of your heart to be illuminated and enlightened you must put your eyes on the things of the spirit on the things of god's promises you must turn away from the strife there the time that you're in right now if you will look at, at god's promises look at the rhema words that's been given to you and and, and 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 what his word says about you then your the eyes of your heart will be lit up and illuminated and you will turn from that that's you'll be separated literally from that strife there'll be like a wall between you and that strife now we know that there's always an enemy on earth we know that we always have trials and tribulations and challenges jesus promised us trials and tribulations so they're always going to be there but we do not have to live in them we can live above them hallelujah there 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 is no defeat for a christian so you know um so the circumstances well let me go to colossians colossians 3 says set your mind on things above not on things of the earth okay so what does that mean that means whatever you set your mind on is is going to get bigger if you set your your mind on uh, your problems all if you think about your problems all day long whatever problem you have right now whatever challenge that's you face right now whatever you set your if you set your mind on that and you meditate all day and think all day about the bank account uh, being close to zero or under zero if you take all day and you think about uh, that pain in your body if you take all day and, and you think about those uh, relational um, problems that you're having with somebody 
if you take all day and you you think upon those things right you find at the end of the day that those things are way bigger than they really are you'll find that they get bigger but if you take the day and you think upon greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and then you meditate on that all day and at the end of the day see where you're at if you take the time during the day to meditate on I am bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh that God's blood runs through my veins. Glory to God. And you meditate on that and then see where you're at at the end of the day. Because, because if you meditate on those things, then the God in you gets bigger. Right? So, um, and it's like, you know, the thing, it's like the, you know, I don't know if they still have them, but uh, vehicles used to have in the mirrors, on those side mirrors, there used to be that text on the mirrors that objects may appear uh, larger than they really are or closer than they really are. That's exactly the way perception works. The more you look into the mirror of either the world or God, the bigger those things get. If you look into the mirror of the, the world, the worldly things, right, the earthly things, the bigger they're going to get. But if you look into the mirror of the word of God, then those things be become small because you begin to meditate that you're raised, right? The word of God says that we are raised in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And you begin to look at those things from a heavenly place, from above, looking down. Have you ever climbed a mountain or, 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 or gone up somewhere high, like even gone up into a high rise in a high building? Uh, if, if you've ever gone up anywhere high and looked down, I, I know that I used to, in, in Alaska, I would climb mountains and I would get to the top and I would look down and, and you would see the road way at the bottom of the mountain and those cars look so tiny. They look so tiny. That's the way it is when you meditate on the Word of God. That's the way it is when you meditate on the rhema words that God's given you. Your problems look so tiny because you begin your faith. You begin to see with the eyes of faith, right? Because see, faith, your faith is not denying that there's challenges in your life right now. Your faith is not denying that there's certain circumstances that need to be straightened out in your life right now. But your faith acknowledges that God is greater and God is bigger than anything circumstance any problem any any barrier that you might be facing right now your faith sees let your faith fly with sight let your faith see today let let your faith begin to remember those things that the lord has spoken to your heart those rhema words that god's given you hallelujah and, and so basically we have to take our eyes and we've got to turn aside from the strife right and put our eyes on the things of god and as we do that then then our eyes will begin to see our perceptions going to be uh seen correctly our, when we're looking at the the issues of life our perception is not seen correctly we have to see through the eyes of the word through the eyes of the promises of god and as we guard our heart with our the eyes of our heart it will determine the course of our life and the bible also says this teaching is continued on part three